welcome to today's video. This is a request from a, uh, a viewer like you. They wanted to see how to install the Splunk Phantom uh, SOAR OVA. And so here, this we're going to show it. Unfortunately, I hate to say it, that the I'm going to show multiple methods. And some of these, by the time you see the video, may not even be available to you. But we're going to go through that anyway. Biggest thing I did, if I come in to Google, this is the way that I've always done. I've gone My Phantom. I run the search and you get this fan, myphantom.us. You log in. I bypass the login screen because I'm already in there. But the basic principle is you get this page. You can download products. Let's point this out. This is where the apps used to be for, for Phantom. If you had, they had pre-built playbooks you could grab. Well, that is all now available on Splunk Base. And you'll notice even here they say this site will shut down June 20th, so in 10 days. So I apologize that many of you may see this and this will be gone, but I'm going to cover the way that they want you to do it from now on. But if you do do this really quick, the way was product, you get privileged and unprivileged. You can run Phantom as root or you can run Phantom as uh, Phantom. The met they recommend running is unprivileged. I would highly recommend running it. And you can just download the latest tar. That's the new method they want you to go with is using a tar. But I did say OVA, and so you just click download this OVA. This OVA is like a six gig file, so I am not going to spend my time downloading it. it. Takes too long, and I don't recommend doing it anymore. But if it is the method you want to go with, or you got other OVAs, this might be helpful to show you the same principle. Um, you'll download this OVA. After it downloads, you'll come to your ESXi or VMware. ESXi is going to look a little bit different. They're the same product, just here. VMware is the uh, uh, allows you to run massive amounts of. Uh, this is basically a server, so it's a hypervisor, self-contained on a on an op as as the operating system. And you can see my my different uh, hyper uh, VM systems I'm running currently. But I would go here and I go create and register a VM. I'm going to deploy a virtual machine from an OVA file. If I do that and I hit next, it's going to have me name it, and I'm going to drag and drop the OVA file from my local box to here. All I've done is I'm this is all web-based. If you put VMware on your box, you would get the very similar process. When you register one, you'll just drag and drop from your uh, there and put it on there, and it will create it, and it will. If it's local, it shouldn't take very long at all. In my situation, it's going to have to go over the network, which is, again, why I don't download it, push it over. It's a lot of different effort, and I just don't have the resources free anymore on my VM farm. But it will, it'll, it'll get here, and as soon as you're done, then you say, hey, where do you want to store it? You'll select the storage space on your machine, and then you just basically click, click, click. All the settings are set for you. It'll tell you, hey, how much hardware. Uh, I've already, I know that you need this much RAM, you need this much CPU, and it will already have that set up for you. You just basically next, 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 finish, and it will install. Um, you need this this OVA. There are plate tools um, that will use OVAs. OVAs are typically VMware, ESXi. But they can be read elsewhere. We, my my friends, and I, we've tried it. There are some specific files that come down with this OVA that really want to be running on VMware, and so we did not have any success running it elsewhere. So it's for us, we've had to use VMware to do it. But if you if you have success running it elsewhere, by all means, comment below, say what you need to do. But that's how you do an OVA. Um, Unfortunately, they're not keeping that OVA up, to, OVA up to date. And so if you do it this route, you're at locked at 5.2. That came out in February of 2022. So we're over a year and a half since basically they've released a version. And so upgrades, you can still upgrade, but you have to go download their upgrade packages, which are these. Um, and it's, you got to go download 5.2, 5.3, 5 5.4, and then 5.5. 5. And that is a big time, time uh, Big, it's just a large amount of time. I recommend just get yourself a RHEL 7, RHEL 8, or a CentOS uh, machine, uh, set that up, and download this privileged, sorry, this unprivileged tar and do it yourself. All right, so what's the new method that they're going to do? Is this, this page is going to disappear in 10 days. You'll be redirected to Splunk Soar. I could click that and it'll save you some time, but. So you can still use my phantom method, and it will just take you directly to it. Or you can go to Splunk.com, log in, go to products up here. You'll see their different products. Here's ES, here's Mission Control, um, and you'll hit Splunk Soar.
and click free trial. If you click free trial, that will take you to some download options. And you can get the, the, the latest version. It's around 5.5, and you'll, here's your tar. If you're running RHEL 8, here it is. If you're running RHEL 7 or CentOS, you just, and then you just download the tar, and away you go. The next step is, what are my install instructions? Because it's, it's, it's pretty similar to Splunk, but there's a few things to do differently. So easiest way to do it, you can just go Google Splunk SOAR install instructions. But if you don't do that, I'll paste the link up above, down below in the uh, description. If you don't want to search for it, here's the install and upgrade Splunk SOAR uh, documents. They'll keep this up to date. And But with the Google, the first one is for Splunk Enterprise. I don't want that. I want Splunk SOAR. I click it, and it takes me to this page. So the very things you're going to do here is prereqs, make sure you're running the, these versions of Red Hat or CentOS. You'll want to make sure your firewall is up. They'll want you want to make sure that your yum is here's how you can install the firewall if it's not there. Start your system firewall and make sure that it's running whenever the system starts. They want to make sure that port 22 is open. Honestly, half the time uh, it should be up. Uh, depends on whether, where you set it up, whether port 22 is open. You might. I usually set my port 22 to be open on installation. Uh, but either way, if it's not open, here you go. Here's your command to add port 22. If you want to use a non-standard port for uh, SSH, there you go. And then you're going to need to install SSH if you don't have it. That's the reason I think this is kind of funny is if you're not, if you don't have SSH installed, if you've already installed SSH, you're probably going to turn the port on. But this is just so you can SSH into the box, SCP, and do maintenance on it. It's just going to make things a lot easier. If you need to run FIPS, here's the command um, what, to see whether you're running the FIPS module. If you don't know what that means, it doesn't really matter. Don't worry about it. Make sure your YUM is up to date. There's your commands to do that, so you're preparing your yum installer. And then you're just going to basically SCP minus R. Remember all these like versions. If you're using tab complete, you don't have to worry about it. As soon as you type Splunk underscore, if you're in the directory where you downloaded it, it's going to autocomplete. Autocomplete your friend, tab complete it. So SCP minus R, grab that file, and then you're going to use it. Like in my case, I'll use Troy at 192.168.1. Maybe I made the new machine at 156. That would be where I install it, and away you go. So Troy at the IP address, whatever your user is on that machine, no brackets, no brackets for the IP address. Then you're going to log in as that user. Uh, you're going to remote in. And now you're on the your new uh, rel CentOS box. We're going to put this, and you're going to tar it. Uh, you're going to tar it, which untars this. And you're going to remember tab complete. This will be untar it to a location. Then you're just going to then you're going to do a system prep. This is really cool because when you run this, it will actually it'll give you a bunch of questions. It'll help you set up your uh, your SOAR user and ins install the services you need like time synchronization. Uh, setting up the user account and system resources, everything. So you'll just follow yes, 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 click yes on all these. And then you're ready to actually install. So you copy it over, you untar it, you do a system prep, and then you do an install, and away you go. Most of the time your port's going to be uh, 443. Just remember that, 443. Uh, that'll put it in, uh, then you can access your Splunk. It's going to have it all set up for you, and you're, and that should be all you need to go be to be ready to go. I recommend this method: download the latest version. Otherwise, you have to download each upgrade. Um, I hope this helps. I did not go through it manually and actually do it. Uh, as I said, the biggest reason is I'm starting to run out of uh, VM space. I need to buy a bigger server, and that's going to take some money to purchase. And so for now, I'm kind of limited what I can do there. I'm, I apologize for not being able to take it through and actually visual, letting you visually see it. But I, I, it really isn't that big a deal. Just follow the steps, and you should be go, good to go. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to me on my on my Discord channel or put comments down below in the uh, 
in this video. And I hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. Hope this video was helpful. Again, this is a request from a viewer like you. If you have videos you want to see, put it down in the comments below. Jump on my Discord, uh, directly reach out to me. I, 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 I tr I'll try to meet your guys' requests and, and provide videos for you. Anyway, hope you keep coming back and talk to you later.